The COVID-19 pandemic constitutes the largest global public health crisis in a century. With daunting health and socio-economic challenges, governments are taking unprecedented measures to limit the spread of the virus, ramping up healthcare systems and restricting movement of millions. The United Nations have set up a single basket fund for the coordination of interventions in Nigeria. And my guest speaks about the United Nations intervention in Nigeria during the pandemic. Welcome to Dateline Abuja, I'm Ibrahim Adra. The Federal Capital Territory Administration is setting up isolation centers as the number of cases for coronavirus continues to rise in the nation's capital. The target is to have centers with at least 600 bed spaces across the capital territory. The Railway Technology Training Center, located in Idu district of the nation's capital, is one of the facilities set aside for the treatment and management of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory inspects the state of facilities in the complex. The hostel in the complex is providing 300 bed spaces for the isolation center, while there are spaces for consulting rooms for the doctors and other health workers. Access to the facility is also key, and the FCT administration is opening up more roads to the complex, including this one that links through the Gosa dump site. Another road that the administration is fixing is the Gadua Road, which links the National Reference Laboratory of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. Though the road is still a long way from completion, the plan is to put up a makeshift access to the laboratory. With the current situation we are faced in, especially the need to have quick access into the National uh, Testing Laboratory for con with COVID-19 uh, at the National Center for Disease Control Laboratory here in Gadua, we have decided to fast track this work and uh, bring the entire project forward. We are now trying to complete uh, one side of the carriageway up to asphalt level and then we are going to provide uh, solar lightning because this is a road that is so important to the fight on uh, COVID-19 that it has to be made accessible day and night and this is what we are trying to do. And from what the engineers are telling me, uh, this road will be delivered within the next two to three weeks. The Cairo General Hospital has also been earmarked as an isolation center. The minister's team inspects the facility where work is still ongoing. This is the Karu District Hospital, uh, General Hospital. And the intention is to convert it into a 100-bed isolation and treatment center for COVID-19. Already the first phase is almost done. And the intention is to, as you can see, the way it is configured, is to be able to cater for three levels of patients. Those who will come for general testing and identification in another section, those that will require some kind of quarantine, and those that will require intensive care service. And uh, with respect to the intensive care services, uh, we are working on a 17 bed capacity which will have all the equipments needed, including ventilators. A section of the Asokoro General Hospital is also earmarked to accommodate some patients. As we are talking now, we have almost 500 to 600 year marked places with beds, some installed like what you have seen here and the one you saw at the Hindu Center and others are work in progress. 
So basically, God forbid, but in the event that we are faced with a number of uh, patients that need treatment, uh, we are working towards ensuring that everybody is treated. Uh, but more importantly, why this facility here is very crucial is that in addition to the normal treatment, it has facilities also for intensive care, where those, you know, and from what we know, usually there are very limited percentage that might need intensive care, and we are working towards that. Apart from the isolation centers, the FCT administration is distributing relief materials to residents in conjunction with some government agencies. The plan is to reach at least 100,000 households in each of the six area councils. As long as we talked about the identified at least reasonable number of vulnerable people in the federal territory, we are targeting at least 100,000 households. When you talk of households, you are talking of individuals, 100,000 households. That is planning in each area council, which will give you a total of 600,000 households. <laughs> In Gimiti community under the Abuja Municipal Area Council, residents are receiving relief materials as the effect of the lockdown takes its toll on their socio-economic life. We are looking at about 1,200 households uh, in general. Um, and if you multiply that by four or five, an average size of a household, then you get a sense of the number of people that we intend to cover. Uh, well, you may see that as maybe a drop, uh, but I think that if everybody get together and we do our own bit, we'll be able to at least uh, alleviate the pressure that the average family, especially the vulnerable families, are going through right now. And the criteria for selection for us are very, uh, very clear. So we are looking at about 30% of these supplies going to widows. 30% going to single mothers, and then the balance 40% to the very vulnerable, disabled, and poor in the, in the, uh, in the communities. Life has been difficult for Maria Bosa. She lost her teaching job two months ago, but this palliative is coming as a relief to her. Thank God I have some little things we are left uh, before this time. And, uh, you know, with no money in the hand, it's really difficult. And that is that. We are, where I was working before this time, we are not given anything, so we are just like empty. We are just asked to go just like that. So it wasn't, it's not easy at all. In the coming days, the FCT administration is hoping to reach more communities and residents with their palliatives.